Hello everyone, this is Rabbit. Today's tutorial is about a preset called randomness, which generates random values or parameters in your node tree. Here I have a large plane with points distributed. And on these points, I'm instancing flowers for um, a collection. I want to add some variations to the scale, and also I want to scale them up. In Blender, when you need a random value, you will probably reach for the built-in random value node. It has a simple controls, a minimum and a maximum value. It's easy to use, but it has a major downside about low efficiency. Using the regular random value node, I firstly need to increase the maximum, but then I still have uh, many tiny flowers because the minimum is too low. So I have to increase that too. And uh, that's the issue. For a single parameter of a scale, I already need to adjust the node twice. Now imagine a complex setup with dozens of parameters. You uh, tweak two values for each one. It becomes a mess. And uh, if the values are large or contain many decimals, it's even more tedious. That's why the randomness node is one of the oldest presets I created for geometry nodes. In fact, this kind of idea existed even before geometry nodes were introduced. The principle behind the randomness node is simple. You set an average value, let's say a scale of five for flowers, and then define a variance around that average. Most of the time, the variance has a useful default value, so you don't need to even touch that. You just focus on the average, and the node gives you a nicely randomized result. Even though the node has uh, many parameters, the core concept is easy to understand. At most, you might just want to adjust uh, the ID and the seed which work just like uh, they do in the built-in random value node. Now, for the more advanced stuff, in this property panel, we are having a node tree doing statistics of the randomness node output. Here we have average, minimum, and the maximum. And uh, you can see the average from the statistics is the same as the average we set. One recent addition to our preset is this decimal shift. As I've discussed in the value precision preset tutorial, it helps to control the precision. And you can find more information within the tooltips as well. Basically, each increase in this integer divides our average by 10. If I make it 1, you can see our average immediately becomes 0.1. Before we go deeper into variance, note that we are currently in the mode of relative variance. By default, we are having a variance of 25%. This means the output will range from 25% below to 25% above the average. If the average is 1, the output will be between 0 0.75 and 1.25 as it's shown in this property panel. If we are scaling the average to 5, the output range will be from 0.75 to 6.25. I think 25% is a good default value for variance, and uh, most of the time you don't need to change it. Then there is a mid-level, which controls where the average sits within the output range. By default, it's set to 0 0.5, meaning the average is right in the middle in the output range. But if you set it to 0, the average becomes the minimum value of all randomized outputs. If you set it to 1, the average becomes the maximum. Switching to absolute variance mode means the variance becomes fixed regardless of the average. For example, with a 
with an absolute variance of 0 0.25 and an average of 5, the randomized output will be between 4.75 and uh, 5.25. Personally, I find this mode less convenient. You still end up tweaking two parameters, like uh, with the random value node. So I've never used it in a real project, but I've created this anyway. There's also a variance only mode where the average is disregarded completely. This is mostly used for position vectors. If you're generating random positions, such as for particles, you usually want them to spread out from the wood origin not centered around some fixed average on three axes. When working with vectors, there are some advanced settings too. For example, you can set a factor per dimension. Here, if you want to spread out particles only on the ground, you can turn the z-axis factor down to zero. There's also an xy sync setting useful if you want a consistent x and y values but want to vary just the, the z values this can be useful when increasing buildings height without disrupting ratios between x and y overall this node is originally meant to improve the efficiency of the built-in random value node but beyond that, it's developed to be very versatile and useful in many scenarios. I hope it helps in your projects too. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.